Okay, in this video, we are gonna be writing the equation of a piecewise defined function. And specifically, the branches of this graph are gonna be linear functions and semicircles. So let's take a look at the graph we're gonna deal with. So here it is. Um, it's got a bunch of pieces. You might find it helpful to kind of identify how many there are. So let's take a look at that. So line, semicircle, semicircle, horizontal line, line, and line. So we got six pieces overall. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and find the equation of each piece, and I'm gonna note where it's valid. And then at the end, I'm gonna put it all together in one piecewise defined function. So first thing we're gonna do is write the equation of piece or branch number one. So let's see. Um, it is a line, so I'd like to note two points on the line. So let's go with negative three, negative three, and negative two, one. So what you can actually do here, because uh, it's pretty easy, is you can just count off the slope. So if you look at that, you're going up four units and over one unit, and that makes the slope just four. So m equals four. I have to pick one of these points to use. So I'm just gonna use the left end point here, negative three, negative three. And then I'm gonna use first point slope form, and then I'm gonna rearrange it a little bit. So it's y minus negative three equals four, x minus negative three. I don't want to leave this minus negative three thing that's all over the place. So I'm going to make it y plus three equals four, the quantity x plus three. And then I need to actually solve for y in this case. So y is equal to negative three plus four, the quantity x plus three. Okay, so that's the equation of the first branch. But now what I need to do is I need to write down where is this valid because I don't want the entire line. I only want the line that's showing up in this graph. So if you look along the x-axis, um, this part of the graph starts at negative three and ends at negative two. So I'm gonna say that this branch is valid between negative three and negative two. And I'm actually including negative three and I'm including negative two for this particular branch. That's gonna be relevant, especially when you do more complicated graphs. Um, I usually use it, uh, so I use an endpoint the first time it shows up. So negative two is the end of this branch and the start of the next branch but I'm including it on this branch because it's valid for this branch and it's the first time it showed up. Um, so now I'm gonna move on to uh, branch two. So let's see. So for branch two, it's a semicircle. I like to write the equation of the full circle and then just solve for y and take the, um, the part that I want, either the top or the bottom. So let's do that. So first I need to find the center. So the center's right there. That's a point uh, zero one. So our center is zero one. I need to find the radius, so I'm gonna draw it in. You definitely don't need to do this, but that has a length of two. So now I'm going to write the equation of a circle. So it's a quantity x minus zero squared plus the quantity y minus one squared equals the radius squared, so equals two squared. I'm gonna simplify this a little bit. You almost never want to expand these, but you always want to simplify as much as possible. Uh, okay, so our goal is to solve for y. I'm gonna subtract x squared from both sides. I'm gonna take the square root of both sides and remember to make it plus or minus the square root. So we have this. Um, and now I'm gonna add one to both sides because I ultimately wanna solve for y when I'm doing this kind of thing. And now I need to decide which part I want. Well, I want the bottom, right? So uh, I need the bottom and that is the negative. So it's one minus radical four minus x squared. I'm not done with this though, because I also need to find um, the interval on which this is valid. So if you look at the graph, along the x-axis, this is valid from negative two to positive two. So this whole interval here. So I'm gonna make a note of that. So between negative two and positive two, I already use negative two for the first branch. So I don't also wanna use it for this branch because um, that would just kind of be confusing, like which branch should I use? Um, so I use them the first time they come up. So that's why I'm including two on this branch. All right, let's move on to part three. It's another semicircle. So I'm gonna do basically the same thing. I need to find the center, which is three, one. And I need to find the radius, which you can pretty much look at and see is definitely one. Uh, let's write the equation. So we're just substituting in, really pays to um, memorize the equation of a circle. I'm going to solve for the quantity y minus one squared. And square root, don't forget the plus or minus. I don't know if you can tell that that's a common thing for people to forget based on how often I say it, but it is. 
Um, I'm going to add one to both sides. And now I look at the graph and I can see that I want the top half of the circle. So that's the semicircle I want. So that's just going to be the plus. So we have this. Okay. And again, we're not done because this is only valid on a certain interval. And it looks like it's from two to four. So let's make a note of that. Remember, two got used for the second branch. Um, and four, it's the first time it's showing up. So I'm going to count it here. This only, the thing that I'm saying that I do only works if the graph is continuous, like you could draw it without picking up your pencil. Um, it's more complicated otherwise, but for this graph, we don't need to worry about it. All right, let's move on to part four. Part four is pretty nice, right? Because it's a horizontal line and the Y value is always one and that's kind of just it. And the reason that's happening, as I said, it's a horizontal line. Those are the best kind of lines to write the equation of. And so all we need to do really is figure out where it's valid. And you can see we already used four and it goes all the way to six. So y equals one between four and six. First time six showed up, I'm gonna count it. And we're on to branch number five. So you can tell this is just like um, an excuse for you to have to do six different problems kind of. And then after that, we have to put them all together. But let's do it. So. It's a line, I need two points. So I'm gonna label them. I've got six, one, and eight, negative three. Again, you can just look at this and count off the slope, right? So you go down four units and over two units. So the slope is negative four over two or negative two. You can also use the formula for slope, but I find it's a little easier when you have this kind of graph to just count boxes. Uh, you'd be surprised later when you get to calculus you count boxes all the time. It's very useful to know the formula, but in practice on these types of things, it's more about just counting boxes. Uh, all right, let's do this. I need a point, so I'm gonna use six one. I like that point because everything is positive. So it's gonna be y minus one equals negative two, the quantity x minus six. Solve for y by adding one to both sides. You notice I'm not expanding things. I don't expand them because it doesn't really help um, and it's pretty clear looking at the way it's written right now, that the ordered pair I used was six, one. I know the slope is negative two. It kind of doesn't obscure things like um, expanding would. So that's why I'm doing that. I need to know where this is valid. So it's valid between six and eight. So I already used six on the previous branch. Eight showing up for the first time, I'm gonna count it. And we're on to the final branch, which again is linear, so that's good. So need two points, we use eight, negative three and nine, four. We need to find the slope. You can count it, it's pretty steep. Uh, you go up seven units and over one, so the slope is actually seven. And then I need to use one of these points. I'm gonna use eight, negative three. Uh, if you notice, I tend to use the left end point on linear functions. There's no reason for that. Uh, I just do it all the time. So let's see, I could use either. You get, you get the same um, line either way. It might look different because of how point slope works, but same line. So here we go, plug in. So y minus negative three equals seven, quantity x minus eight. And then, um, so y is equal to negative three plus seven times the quantity x minus eight. I've got to figure out where it's valid. So we look, it's valid between eight and nine. We already used eight. So we're gonna say eight and then to nine, uh, less than or equal to nine. So we're including nine for this branch. All right. So the last thing we wanna do is actually write the piecewise function. We found all of the equations of each part. Now we gotta put them together with the proper notation. So it's going to be f of x is equal to, and then you put this giant brace. So this has six branches, so it's a very large brace. And now we just list the branches in order. So usually you go kind of from left to right, top to bottom. So uh, between negative three and negative two is what I'm gonna write first and then you just wanna keep going. So we put them in order. Anyone who wants to use this function can look at it can figure it out pretty quickly. Um, and we just write it. So the notation's a little weird the first time you see it, but it's not really that bad. And you see it kind of frequently. You gotta get used to using it. And uh, I hope you found this video helpful because that's it. Uh, all right, good luck.